So you got an M1 Mac or you're planning on getting an M1 Mac and you're not sure if Homebrew is going to be able to install and you're not quite sure if you're going to be able to get a Java SDK on the new machines. I'm going to show you how to get Homebrew easily installed on the new M1 Macs no matter which version you have, the Mac Mini, the Air, or the Pro. And I'm going to show you an easy way to install the Java SDK. If you're new here, I'm Taylor Brower. I'm a software engineer and photographer. Before we get started, if you don't mind just tapping that like button, it will really help out. And now, let's get into it. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our web browser, in this case Safari, and we're going to go to brew.sh. Here you're going to find all the instructions on how to install Homebrew, and you can see the command here. We're going to copy it, then we're going to go back to our terminal. And now, typically Homebrew tells you to uh, just paste this command in and it will run. And this would normally work on Intel-based Macs. But on M1, we're going to have to do something a little different. We're going to have to go to the start of it. We're going to have to type arch-x86-64. Just like that. So arch space dash x86 underscore 64. And then the command that was provided to us by brew.sh. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. We're going to type in our password. And now it's going to say that it's going to install Homebrew. We're just going to go ahead and say yes. And it downloads and installs the software just fine. Whenever you go to, oh, there we go. Perfect, okay, well that took a little bit, but now we can see that uh, brew is installed. And then from here, you can just do, so it says brew help, we'll just do brew help. Works, okay, so we'll just do brew search, and then I wanna search for NeoFetch, which is a program that lists out like your system specs. Works fine. So now I wanna do brew, I wanna install NeoFetch, so let's go brew install NeoFetch. Okay, and it will say that it's, okay, so let's just do reinstall because that didn't work, I already have it. And then we get this message, cannot install in homebrew on ARM processor. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we just simply do that same thing that we did before, so x86 underscore, and then we do brew reinstall, you'll do install, in my case I'm doing reinstall neofetch. And then we can see it works no problem. It's gonna download the image, and then Homebrew is going to take care of all the dependencies with it and install the software. All right, and we're done. And then I can just run NeoFetch. There it is, working perfectly. Let's try something else. Let's do like arch x86. Now I know I haven't done this. Brew, um, Ask install Firefox. I don't have Firefox on this machine, so we'll do that. Same thing. Goes to Mozilla, gets the CDN, installing it via Cask, which Cask just takes care of the whole drag it from this folder, put it in this folder thing. You can read more about that whole process on homebrew.sh. And they even have instructions on how to make your own Cask files, which is pretty cool. And then we can see it installed successfully, so I'll just do Firefox, and I found. Okay, well it's not going to be as simple as that, but if I go and I look for Firefox, you can see that it was recently downloaded, so now the operating system is prompting me to open it. Uh, Rosetta 2 is doing its thing down here. Initial applications like this with Rosetta 2 do take a little bit longer uh, to start up, but once it's up, like it's good because Rosetta 2 did its thing. And there we go. Firefox, if I quit, I'll close the tabs, I'll reopen it, and it will just start right up. Cool. So now, on to the next part. How do you get a Java SDK installed in here? 
what we're going to do is we're going to run this command, which is going to install this program called SDK man. And you get like a cool graphic here, SDK, cool. And then from here, after it's installed, you can just do SDK. And it's going to list out a bunch of commands that you can run. So I can do SDK list Java. And this is going to give me all the dependencies for Java that are available. We can see we have a lot of SDKs here from various different providers. So I'm just going to install a, uh, a Zulu one here. And you can actually see it shows that I have one already installed, this 11.0.9. So I'm just going to show you um, SDK install. And then if I want to install that specific one, I'll just try to install it again. And then let's see. Uh, yeah, dash Zulu. Okay. It will say that it's not a valid candidate. Okay, so let's try a different one. Let's try like, let's try eight. Eight's pretty popular. 8.0272. And then Zulu. Zero two some two. Um. Oh, you know what? There you do that. Okay, so then it will say that it's already installed. If I go to the eight one, I don't have eight installed, so then I'll put Java. So it's SDK install Java. And now it will automatically go out and fetch it. And that's it. And that's pretty cool. The, now that I have 11 set as my default, it's prompting me if I want to set the new one to the default. I'm just going to go ahead and say no because I want to keep 11 as my default on the system. And that's it. Now you can open IntelliJ or Eclipse or whatever IDE you're using and the version will be there. I can run java dash version and you can see the OpenJDK is there. It shows you the version number, the virtual machine that it's running on. And I can go into uh, Java, have the list of commands, um, Java C to compile Java stuff through the command line. So you can see we're, we're all set up and uh, good to go. All right, guys. Well, that's it. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, please leave a like. It'll really help out. Um, if you have any questions for me, leave a comment down below. I'm Taylor Brower, and I will see you in the next one.